even in the absence of a huge black swan event, uh, where are we headed and, and what kind of a time trajectory are, are we on where we just can't keep on keeping on with these like lower prices on metals, but then running out of metals at the same time? Um, that's really hard to say as far as the when part of it. I would suspect that we will see some type of event and then they point the fingers at that event and say, well, this is why it happened. You know, there was plenty of gold, there was plenty of silver. Um, and when I say event, I, well, I'm talking about a false flag. And I am on record and we're still uh, exactly two weeks out now from the US elections. I am on record saying, and I still believe at this point that there is slightly less than a coin flip chance that we even have elections. And I say that because those who are in power do not want to lose lose power, lose control. And it looks to me like there will be a huge red wave uh, far far beyond the amount that can be cheated or or altered in elections. So I, I think uh, uh, those in power d- do not want to give up power and the best way to do that is to have something happen that would cancel elections and i I, and also i mean just look what came out over this weekend i mean putin's gone to uh all the western leaders and talking about ukraine uh lighting up a a tactical nuke and then it goes back and forth no you're going to do it no you're going to do it just the fact that they're talking about it it's scary as hell and I mean, that's one out of what, maybe a hundred or more than a hundred potential false flags out there. You have no idea what it could be. I mean, it could be, it could be aliens, who knows? Or even closer to home, a cyber attack that would shut down banking or shut down the internet, that sort of thing. Um, and certainly then we, how can the ordinary person possibly know the truth when it's being told, oh, this was, this is who is to blame for that. Right, exactly. So back to the question about the state of the metals availability, what are your uh, analyses telling you about the trajectory that we're on? We certainly know, for example, with the U.S. domestic uh, uh, strategic petroleum stockpile that that's being depleted and it may be depleted within a month to three months. Uh, What do you see about the the rate of depletion of the major metals exchanges and what kind of if if things remain unaltered on that flow, uh, what kind of uh, progress report you'll think you'll be having, you know, as we go into end of fourth quarter and beginning of first quarter? I I think by the end of fourth quarter, or beginning of first quarter, I think you'll be looking at whatever happened in the rearview mirror. I would be surprised if, if there's still metal available for fiat by the end of the year. It's a sobering thought. It's a wake up call to a lot of people who've been sitting on the on the sidelines waiting for, and this is another thing maybe you've heard from clients, they keep saying, well, if there's going to be a market crash, then everything should go down together and I'll do some bargain shopping for metals at that time. How do you address that strategy when people maybe haven't even gotten started yet, but they're waiting to, because they're waiting for a a crash that will give them sale prices on everything? Well, that's a pretty risky strategy. You're, You're basically betting that you're gonna be able to get yourself in place after an event has happened. Uh, I mean, after after an event has happened, it's, it's, it's too late. And where we're headed now, this is not a cyclical event. We've been through cyclical events. I mean, look at 2008, 2009, uh, everything crashed, including uh, gold and silver. However, and I don't know if you were in the market at that time, but silver dropped from, I don't know, seven, seventeen dollars to eight or nine dollars in the cash markets but you were not able to buy any silver below fifteen dollars so you know looking at your tv or your computer screen and it tells you currently silver is nineteen dollars well good luck with that good luck finding silver really under twenty four dollars so just understand this is a secular event this is the end of Western empire is where we're headed. This is not a cyclical event where we have some bad times and then it's off to the races to the upside again. This is, 
this is the end. And when I say the end, it's the end of the system as we knew it. And I wish I could tell you exactly what the new system will look like, um, but it's going to look a lot different than, than life as we knew it. For people who want to make sure that they're staying aware so that they can be better prepared as we go through these very uh, volatile times. We've we've had a number of people on. I mean, Rick Rule's interview a couple times ago was buckle up, volatility ahead, on and on. People are talking about you haven't seen anything yet in, uh, in terms of the amount, the impact, the destructive impact. Michael Pinto, Gregor Manorino, others are saying that the Fed's impact on the market, uh, these events that you're talking about impacting the market, you haven't seen anything yet. As people are wanting to prepare for that, where can they stay connected to get insight and be aware along the way? Uh, listening to people like you, listening to podcasts. I mean, uh, read. There's there's plenty of websites where you can read uh, truth or sanity. I mean, I, I don't really even know how to, to respond to that. Well, where can people follow your work? I mean, if they search by your name, they'll find your interviewing around, but how can they follow you? Right. Uh, if you want to reach me directly, uh, you can reach me at my, my email address is bholter at hotmail.com. Bill, I guess you think a lot about things, I guess, at a, at a broad level and your feet are on the ground. If there's, a, if there's a way of thinking about the kind of times that we're entering into that you'd like people to adopt, a, a manner of thinking, a philosophy of thinking, how would you describe that? You're on your own. I mean, that's, that's where we're headed. There will be a spell where nothing works. I mean, it may be that cell phones go down also. It may be that the internet goes down also. Uh, the power grid goes down. Your fresh water supply goes down. You dial 911 and nobody answers. Your house is on fire and there's no police department. Basically, you, you need to think or have the mindset that you are on your own with everything. And I mean, if you're the type of person who, who has not stocked up uh, food and you go to the grocery store three or four times a week to buy two meals, you know, buy food for the next two meals or three meals, <laughs> put some food back because there is going to be a spell where there's no food available other than food that's locally grown by farmers, ranchers, what have you. Yeah, that's another point we didn't talk about here. Uh it's not entirely that you're on your own, but you better figure out your food security plan. And that may include establishing relationships with local producers if you haven't already. Uh, so that, yeah, that's one of the things that we've talked about with some of our other guests, including Joel Salatin, a farmer from the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia about food security, absolutely critical. And storing up, as Paul Helensky has interviewed with us on inexpensive, affordable ways to store up food. Uh, you don't have to go for these super expensive uh, pails of, of stuff that's not very nutritious and is very, very expensive. So um, great, great uh, food for thought. <laughs> so uh, Bill, always, always appreciate your visits here with us. And we know that you, uh, you have your eyes on the markets, you have your eyes on realistic and practical preparedness steps. Always grateful for your visiting. My pleasure, Donegan. Thank you.